Thanks, Rajak. Uh, so uh, let me start with this till the slides come up. How many of you have heard about Zoomka? Okay, almost everyone. How many of you have used Zoomka? Wow, today my CEO is going to be really happy about this. <laughs> okay, so I'll be talking about a problem that we are facing at Zoomka. So I think a lot of people have already used it. And when you would have used it, do you actually drive Zoomka like your own car? Or you drive Zoomka like a Zoom car? <laughs> like a Zoom car, right? <laughs> so that's the biggest challenge that we are facing uh, because people do, not do a lot of rash driving. And uh, due to that, we have a lot of service, accident, and maintenance cost in our business. And as much as it accounts for 7% of our net revenue. Now, because of this, it's, it's a very, very big problem, and it's very difficult to solve because we have moved to a world where there's no, no intervention required when you pick up or drop a car. It means when you go to the site, you can just open a car from your mobile device, you can take the car, drop it back, there's no one going to be manually check the car now. So that is how you are going to scale. Uh, initially, when we launched, there were sites where they were manned sites people used to see uh, and oversee if you are, have caused a dent or if you have broken the clutch, everything, but now it's not possible. Then in this era, how do we monitor uh, the uh, depreciation on the car within a trip? So that is the key thing that I'll be talking about today. Okay, so why should we care about better driving behavior? I already talked about it. First is not only to uh, make uh, more profitability in my business, but also to save lives by reducing accidents. So imagine you take a Zoom car and you meet with an accident, right? So it comes as a liability on the business that we are responsible for making sure as much as we can that you have a safe trip while you are with Zoom car. And the second is to reduce service and maintenance cost, obviously for business profit. Uh, now, let me share some stats about accidents within Zoomka. So we have approximately 400 to 500 accidents per month. And uh, around 30% of them are fatal. So how do you tackle those cases? Now, these are very serious cases that uh, I'm, I'll be talking about. And if I were to share with you some of the hard-hitting facts about the accidents in India, yeah, it's very clear that we are having around one and a half lakh people who have died in road accidents, right? and that is just in a year. And uh, around 17 people are coming to it every hour. So we need to do something about it. So we, what we thought is that let's make a solution for Zoom car, and if it works out, let's you know, roll it to all the cars in India. Top reasons for accidents. Rash driving, uh, system malfunction. You are on a trip, engine breaks down, clutch breaks down, brake breaks down. And third is bad road conditions. Can anyone tell me which is the topmost reason? No, no, uh, top means one. It cannot be first and last. Rash driving, yeah. So 90% of the deaths on road are due to rash driving. So we knew that it is high, but it is 90% we did not know. And this is verified by internal data also, apart from the government data. Now what do we do? So the next is, how do you detect rash, rash driving when uh, someone is using Zoomka? So we have built two technologies. One is the AI-powered dash cams, and second is the driver scoring system. I think Saurabh also touched upon it in the previous session. I'll be going a little deeper on how exactly we are doing it. So let's learn about safety alerts using cameras. So what we have is, this is the kind of camera we have uh, installed in our, uh, on the windshield of our cars. Now this is, uh, I think, in 500 to 1,000 cars out of our total fleet. We have not installed in all cars, so might be some of you have experienced it. Uh, now this camera comes with an NVIDIA processor that is a deep learning pro on which the deep learning processing happens. Uh, it has 10 uh, high definition cameras, both front, side, and back. The inward facing cameras are disabled, so don't worry about privacy. Uh, we are not looking at you. And uh, it also has uh, internal sensors, that is a 9-axis accelerometer, gyrometer, and the magnetic uh, sensors. Now these are the things that help us detect objects and detect the G-force. Uh, when collision happens. And this is how it is installed. So it's behind the rearview mirror. Okay. I'll just run you through a video. On
Okay, so this, these are actual footages of our cars, and uh, what we have seen here is how the alerting system works for heartbreaking, acceleration, tailgating, etc. What happens is, say for example, you heartbreak, and uh, we figure out from the cameras that you have heartbreak. Immediately, there is a voice alert inside that is uh, uh, placed on the chip, which asks you to, uh, you know, slow down or drive safely. And similarly, for hard acceleration, we would ask you to please, you know, maintain the uh, steady speed and do not accelerate. Now, this is uh, how we are maintaining kind of an engagement with the user in real time. This is also an educated system where a person sometimes doesn't know that he's actually heartbreaking according to the standards, but they are. And uh, this not only helps in uh, reducing accidents, reducing costs, but also in training drivers and on how to drive better with Zoom car. I'll take you through another video. Now, this is, uh, this is accident video, and this is the real footage on how things happen and what we do after that. So you know how fatal it can be? Now what do you do in such a situation? First of all, how did you de detect that? So you see there's a detected moderate G-force. This is a KPI that is taken out by the cameras. And this helps us detect whether there was a G-force means it's like a vertical Z-axis force. Uh, that happens mostly when you collide or you bump or you know the car turns over. Now as soon as that happens, what do we do? Now, the first thing is we know that you need immediate help. So alert goes to the nearest city team to investigate the vehicle. How do we investigate the vehicle is we look at the cameras that are placed inside the car, whether the car has toppled or is in a bad shape or is just a fake alert. Right? So after we evaluate, we also che obviously check with the customer if they need assistance. In case it's proven that there's an accident, we would also, uh, our city teams would rush to the uh, location, but we also have tie-up with all the police stations across India, and uh, the nearest police station is alerted so that they can go with either with an ambulance or uh, there personally to help the customer out. And using this, we have till now saved around 20 lives within six months, approximately. Now, let's go to the next thing, that is driver score. Driver score, like every loan, when you go to take a loan, you, they would ask you for your credit rating uh, from any of the bureaus. But what is there for the drivers? So we have devised our, our driving signature, uh, like Saurabh was also talking about, that how well do you drive? So initially, we thought of tying up with uh, different partners who are already do it. But what we realized is all the people who have built driver score, either they have made it for the US market or they have made, made for the commercial vehicles, but not really for the uh, normal P2P vehicles, which all of us use. So we built it ourselves. The purpose is to rate the customer's driving and also derive its implication on the car condition. Because of your driving, what is the impact on my car? So uh, OBD, uh, this also sort of talked about. I'll rush through it quickly. We have an OBD2 device. OBD means onboard diagnostics. It is fitted inside the car. You can see on the uh, bottom image that uh, there's a plug-in on the, on the dashboard of the car. What kind of things it captures? Did you know that at any point of time you are in Zoom car, we would know your vehicle speed, your RPM, fuel level, your location, AC, headlight, odometer, blinker, and many more. I could not list it down. But they are around 20 parameters. At least we get to know at every second you're driving. Now, this is actually uh, so huge data. And this is kind of a gold mine that if anyone uh, processes properly, they can actually do wonderful things and enhance customer experience like none other companies can do. And uh, OBD data uh, also reads the data into a binary format. It is based on the voltage fluctuations from the sensors. So the sensors, when they fluctuate, uh, then it sends data through the canvas, and then it relays to us using Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to the HQ. Now, how do you create a driver score? Let's go a little deeper. So there are uh, two main parts to it. First is to identify the events of rash driving. 
Second is to identify the events where driving was not rash, but the way you're using the car, the fuel or mileage would reduce. Third is to build an algorithm, and then we categorize people into how they drive. So what are top indicators of rash driving? First, hard braking, right? Hard acceleration, over speeding sharp turns. Every one of us does this when we use Zoom car, right? So uh, next time, you know, we are tracking you. <laughs> Let's come to the efficiency and uh, mileage events. First is time idling. What is time idling? Time idling means I have heard about people who have taken their cars to, say, Delhi Connaught Place, and they have purchased the lowest package of uh, five rupees per kilometer, and they just took the car because they wanted to sit in AC. And they switched on the AC on Connaught Place, and uh, they were sitting there for one hour, used the car, uh, paid 200 rupees, because if they would have gone to the movie hall, they would have uh, paid much more. And that is one of the use cases. But what, ha what happens is that uh, the mileage of the car comes down, their fuel efficiency comes down, and it's not good in, in long-term basis. This is not the actual uh, reason why we let out cars. Second is battery drainage. Battery drainage obviously happens sometimes. You forget to switch off your headlights, right? Every one of us does that. But who will tell you that you have forgotten? So can we use this IoT data and say, you know, your car is at halt, your headlight is on for the last five minutes, can you please switch it off? As simple as that. Third is gear usage. So a lot of us uh, uh, use, say, rush to uh, 40 kilometers per hour even on the first gear or on the second gear. So what happens is the RPM shoots up. Now, RPM is a very good indicator of how good a driver you are. If the RPM is in a higher range, four to five, most of the time, it means that you're not using the gears properly. You're not using the clutch properly. And fourth is the efficiency of clutch. So you know that uh, the, ma the maximum degradation of the clutch happens when you are at half clutch. So generally, either you release the clutch fully, or generally you press the clutch fully. Uh, some people, are, when you drive in traffic, they would always have their foot on clutch. That also degrades the performance of clutch. So these are very normal things. You wouldn't even think that this is bad. But this actually increases the cost for us. So just an educative mechanism where we can tell you, don't do this. Uh, and this is the reason why you should not do this. I think people should, uh, would improve the driving behavior. Now let's look at the algorithm's bird eye view. What is the first thing we do? First thing is, uh, what we try to predict is, if you were driving smoothly, how would you drive? So the blue uh, data that you see is the actual drive, uh, driving data of a rash driver. And the other data lines you see in between, or purple, green, are the smoothened data. It means that if you were to drive sanely and smoothly, this should be the kind of pattern you should have followed. Right? And there, from there, we uh, uh, take out something called as a smoothing index. That is an indicator how smooth driver you are. So we are not saying that you should, uh, you drive in traffic, you drive on the hills, you drive anywhere. But the thing is, drive smoothly. We cannot control that. I cannot say drive on a th second or third gear on hills. That's not possible, right? All I can say is drive smoothly. So that is the first thing. Second is, then we add on to the layer of the events that we have detected. And based on the severity of events, say you are harsh braking, and harsh braking can be in two multiple uh, grades. Harsh braking can be reduction of speed by five kilometers uh, per second. It can be 10 kilometers per second. It can be 20 kilometers per second. So people who are doing, say, at 20 kilometers per second, they are penalized more as compared to people who are doing five kilometer per second reduction. So we count the number of events and take a percentage of events in the total trip per kilometer, and then say that, you know, maybe you're harsh braking too many times. This is not a normal behavior. Similarly for acceleration, over speeding, and sharp turns. So we reward and penalize based on these events. And third is regarding the internal uses, that is time idling, battery drainage, RPM music, uh, gear, uh, that we get from gear usage, and the clutch usage. Now, uh, after combining everything, we get a driver score. So uh, this is something, uh, this is the dummy image, how it will look like. So, so you can see a time series view of the score. You can see overall trip. What we also do is we break it down. If your score is less, then why is the score less? As you can see for this guy, this guy is idling too much. That is why it is in red. But the braking and the accelerating behavior is fine. right? Another thing that we will be coming up now is with gamification. It means that if there are 1,000 trips of Zoom car going at any point of time, all of them will be competing. Whoever will have the highest score at the end of the day will give, say, X amount of credits to the person for the next trip. 
right? Another thing that we are thinking about is how to reward good driving is that if you drive uh, above a range of say 80 out of 100, your score is above 80 for continuously 10 kilometers, immediately we'll give you 100 points top up. So you have to incentivize people, tell them what is right driving and then actually it will improve. What uh, generally what we have seen happening is you build a product, but there are no business applications or processes over that. And that is why people don't change their behavior. This is the actual impact in the beta version. Uh, the accidents have reduced by 20%. Service maintenance costs have gone down by 25%. Right? What we have done, uh, also done is, now the next time you come to take a Zoom car, we already have a history of your driver score. What that means is, if you are a rash driver, the security deposit is going to bump up, and vice versa. If you're a good driver, we will not take security deposit from you. So as simple as that, it's, we have to be fair. And the fourth one is, that uh, uh, the best drivers, we take out a list of best drivers and they upgrade in a loyalty program uh, with respect to upgrades of cars when you will come the next time, with respect to the number of points you will get, uh, obviously security deposit will not be there and whatever benefits incrementally come into our business will be straight away passed on to this loyalty tier. Now if you see it from an internal cost perspective, the cost of the project when we internally did it was around 2 lakhs but the kind of savings we are having is 50 lakhs per month. So that's huge savings we are having uh, doing this project of driver score. Now, uh, there are two things that, uh, uh, one is that uh, when accident happens, I get to know. Second is, I try as much as I can uh, to take out driver score and improve driving. Another thing is also that you're driving well, but maybe you're going in an area which is accident prone. Right? So what happens? Now, this is the data I took out yesterday. This data for the last 30 days where accidents have happened using Zoom car in India. Right? So I'll focus on one area. Uh, the, uh, let's go towards the Mune, Pumbe, uh, Mune, Pum, uh, Pune and Mumbai highway. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So you can see a patch between there and there's a heat map. Uh, what is happening is a lot of accidents happening every day here. So what do we do about it? So this is the stretch and these are the hot spots in that area. And say a car is approaching this hotspot. So as soon as you hit the boundary of that hotspot, you get an alert. This is an accident prone area. Now, why it is better than the accident prone areas defined by all the all the government agencies or the road signs is because they are not real time. They are static. Right? If something happens, no one is going to go there and update it. But we build this data uh, depending on the accidents that have happened every day in Zoom car itself. So uh, this is if a landslide happened today and due to that some accident happened, it would immediately come up here. So that is why it is better than uh, the existing infrastructure. Uh, I already told you there's a hotspot, so we build a one kilometer radius. As soon as you try to enter that one kilometer radius, you get an alert. Uh, and it is real time. <coughs> right? So again, when we implemented this, the accidents in the accident prone area kind of reduced by half. So a positive number. What next? What do we do next? Can, uh, does everyone know this? Yeah. Right. Can you guess what is the next thing we are going to do to ensure safety? Oh, uh, no, yeah. It's crime reporting. Right? Uh, How do you are going to take care of the insurance for all uh, traffic violations? No, that will do that, but that is not, that is not fun. Uh, that's okay. It'll happen. But uh, this is more innovative. So, what is crime reporting is that. Say, for example, you're taking a Zoom car. No, you do not know that area. You're going there for the first time. And, but I know that the area is very, uh, you know, notorious area and known for a lot of crimes. Now, how do I know that? There are two sources. One is the government database, which is, again, static. And one is the Zoom car fraud repository. We get to know when a person steals the car from where he belongs, where he takes the car, right? And if uh, in Zoom car, there are a lot of smuggling also that happens. There are a lot of other things that happen. Which all areas those things are happening? Where are the fraudsters living? Everything is known. So imagine you plot this out on an India map. And you are uh, there in the middle of the night. You have stopped somewhere, which is like in say in 10, uh, 10 meters vicinity of uh, where a fraud person is located. So should I not tell you? Right? It makes perfect sense. So we are kind of doing crime reporting now. So, so there are two sources. One is the government databases. It's open source databases where they kind of tell the areas, broader areas. They're not lat longs, but they said like, for example, 
uh, some area in Bangalore, some road, and we figure out the lat long uh, uh, doing reverse engineering and then plot back into our data. And second is Zoomka data. We experience a lot of frauds every day, whether it's car theft or smuggling, as I said, or other things. So we keep track of where all it is happening, which was the source, which is end destination, and we keep pulling it back to the system. And then we make a fraud, uh, uh, overall fraud repository. Sorry? Uh, I'll tell you exact name on the website. Right. So the summary is these are the four pillars of how we are ensuring better driving behavior and ensuring safety uh, for Zoomka, real time safety alerts using cameras, driver scoring, accident uh, area alerts and crime intimation. Right. So I think I'll keep more time for questions. And uh, please feel free to ask any questions if you have. So yeah, uh, this is Kevin here. Yeah. So yeah, yes. I don't have any question, but uh, let's say if driver is feeling sleepy, so is there any uh, accent taking uh, uh, from uh, taking any accent? So do you have any kind of uh, prohibition for that? Yeah, so I'll tell you about that. So uh, now, if the driver is sleepy, how do you detect that? So for that, you need the internal cameras to be on. Okay. And that is uh, something called as distracted driving algorithms that are built. That are there in place, but uh, we have not deployed it because it invades the privacy of a person. Okay, so uh, it's one of my projects. So I have implemented a project that uh, uh, if driver is feeling, feeling sleepy, so uh, alert is uh, buzzing in a car, so driver can uh, uh, take a rest for some time. So, uh, so I, I this one is just a suggestion for you. Okay, thanks. Uh, hello. Yeah. After that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was a <coughs> wonderful speech. Thanks Thank for you. that. So I have one question. Uh, so you have to de define <coughs> multiple behaviors here, right? For a driver, for example, if he is doing a uh, harsh braking or over speeding. Hmm. So my first question is, how do you define that? Uh, the reason is that uh, hmm. let's say driver is uh, taking a village road or he's going on a highway, hmm. multiple roads, right? Hmm. So these definitions can change based on that uh, context, right? So hmm. in a highway, you can, you're supposed to go in 80 kilometers per hour hmm. and you can break in a short span, hmm. but not yeah. in a small roads, right? Yeah. Yeah. So how do you manage okay. that? So there are two ways to deal with it. Uh, if, you, uh, if you see, I've talked about uh, grading of harsh acceleration, okay? So even if you're uh, running on potholes, Right? You can see the pothole. Is there any uh, reason why would you hard heartbreak? You can see and you can slow down initially also. Right? So heartbreaking is irrespective of the road conditions. And similarly, hard acceleration. And this is what we have understood. What we do is we have built this algorithm by different car models. Because every car is different. Every car pickup is different. Every car braking speed is different. So every car would have a different thresholds. And plus, we do not say this is heartbreaking. We say this is heartbreaking of this grade. Then grade two, grade three, grade four. So even if you're doing, uh, there are a lot of potholes and you did not see it and you had to do, you won't be penalized that much. It's very minor penalization. But if you continuously do it at a grade seven level, then you will be penalized. So we take care of that that way. I think this. I have a question. Yeah. So in case of real time alerts, okay, so uh, what will be the, uh, in case of rainy and different uh, environment conditions, so mm -hmm. how your uh, AI deep learning model it's going to work in case of uh, uh, collusions and such scenarios? Uh, uh, in case of? Uh, like there is a rainy environment or there may be snow or fog. Okay. Like in such cases, how your deep learning model or your AI algorithm will work? Okay. So I think we haven't really tested the accuracy with a rainy condition because uh, the amount of data is very scarce right now. Mm -hmm. uh, that it, it should rain and then we should come to know that it, it, it is raining in the place where Zoomkar is moving, mm -hmm. right? And it rained for only this much of from this timestamp to this timestamp and I record that data. Mm -hmm. So uh, we haven't done that right now. So it is basis on clear weather for now. Uh, one more question. So you have shown the dash cam, right? So is yeah. that customized board or it's a market, it's available? It's customized for Zoomkar. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So dense is a separate uh, 
totally separate uh, discussion. We are having uh, another algorithms that are based on car damage detection, where you take you have to compulsorily give the images of the car at the start and the end of the trip. So using those photographs, we kind of try to figure out was there a dent before and is there a dent after. Similarly for minor scratches, major scratches. So initially it used to happen manually. There was a person deployed, but right now we are making it uh, more technology driven. So this is still in process. This is not rolled out yet. A lot of time it happens that multiple friends together take a single Zoom car for their trip. If one person is driving for one part of the trip, is it possible that his driving score will be impacted only by that part? Or so you see your friends are driving, uh, taking yeah. turns to drive. Yeah. No, no, you have to, whoever has booked the car needs to take care that whoever he is giving to drive should drive well. <laughs> We can do that. What we can do that is that for a, a significant amount of part, the driving behavior was X and then it significantly changed. So because we have this driving behavior every three seconds, you can figure out is the maybe there, there's a different pe person driving. But I cannot uh, penalize only that person. Uh, is basically the responsibility of the person who has booked the car. Hi. Uh, I have one question, you know. There is always uh, one statement, say, whenever we are driving, and it's a woman in the car, the people will be saying, okay, it's woman, just leave it. So my question is, uh, now you have considered the score, right, the, the driver's score. So do you have any kind of things where, you know, if a woman is a driver, do you have something special for that? Or, you know, uh, do you consider that as a one of the factors whenever you are scoring this thing? So No, I think women are better drivers than men. That's what I wanted to yeah, hear, so, actually. Yeah, so <laughs> they won't be penalized. <laughs> so... Uh, there is one question. Other than camera, also you can may, uh, observe the driver, right? The pressure a uh, person is having on the uh, steering oh, or yeah. the, way, the way he is sitting, his posture is changing, right? Mm. So there might be some other invasive way you might want to... Uh, uh, because the camera has mm. some problem, but this might not. Yeah. It c yeah, we can do that, but you have to put sensors on the steering wheel then to know it's the... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's not the biggest problem we want to solve right now. That is why we did not venture into it. Uh, Arpit, uh, yeah. this is a very eye-opening thing. I didn't know Zoom car was doing all this. Uh, in terms of the telemetrics, right? Are you measuring things like uh, tire pressure yes. and other things? Therefore, knowing that tire pressure, engine coolant temperature, uh, your engine oil, fuel, everything. So, so why can't you do what he was saying? If you, if they're using the wipers, right? Then you know it's raining. Yeah, we can do that. But as I said, that was a, a very niche problem. So when you pick up a big problem to solve, you pick up the biggest use cases, and then maybe, I think it's a very good idea. So we can think about it now, that when the wipers are on, it means it's a rainy condition, and that's a good solution also. Thanks. Yeah.